And Lindsay, give me a second. I'm putting the skincare live on Facebook as well. All right, cool. Yes, we're good. All right. So Anne Lindsay is our skincare expert. She knows all things wellness, nutrition, how to balance your nutrition to make your skin look fantastic. And Walter is going to introduce Lindsay a little bit more. He is the founder of My Derma Dream and the yes, the man behind the brand. Um, so he's going to give you a little introduction about himself, about Lindsay, and then we'll get into it. So I hope you all brought your questions, brought your water, because today we will be talking about it. And um, let's get started. Walter, go ahead. Let us know. Beautiful. Beautiful. So first of all, Lindsay, so, so grateful for you to be here uh, today for the very, very first virtual masterclass. Denise, awesome, awesome for you to set it up. Um, welcome, everybody, right to the first edition of the My Derma Dream virtual masterclass. What we're all about at My Derma Dream is making skincare accessible, right? So uh, myself struggling with acne, um, you know, a lot of us, you know, struggling with the elasticity in our faces. What we want to do is how can we make skincare accessible, not just the products, but also the knowledge and the experts in the industry. And how can we create an environment with our community to get those secrets and understand what really drives skincare results here in our My Derma Dream community. And today we're honored to welcome someone who's dedicated her life to helping others with skincare, but even healthcare. Lindsay had quite the journey of herself, right? So a couple of years ago, Lindsay was diagnosed with an inflammatory disease that caused her health to decline rapidly. And there was no one out there with, you know, the knowledge or the information that could help her fight, you know, that disease. So she decided to take up the challenge for herself and use her expertise in data and technology to map out the problem and get rid of the inflammation once and for all. That's years ago. Today, Lindsay is the founder of Small Hinges Health, and she's been featured in Forbes, CBS, TED Talks as a top entrepreneur for helping countless of people uh, to maximize their health and their skin. And in today's masterclass, Lindsay is going to share her top lifestyle tips and tricks to ignite your skin's inner glow. So please welcome Lindsay O'Neill. Oh my goodness. What an amazing intro. Thank you so much for having me. And, and honestly, I have to say thank you for creating this community and creating this amazing, amazing brand because it's so much more than just beauty and skincare, you know, and you, you've probably all heard the saying that beauty is not only skin deep, but what does that really mean? I think a lot of people think about that, like, our personalities and our heart and our true spirit is where our beauty can be seen. But a lot of scientists and doctors and researchers will actually argue that physical beauty is also not skin deep because it actually starts in your gut. So a lot of what we're going to be talking about today um, and over the course of you know the next few weeks is how we're going to glow from the inside out. And it's not always as easy as some of these doctors and experts say that it is, but it also doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be super hard to follow. And so what I love about working with people is that I get to practice my methodology, my small hinge methodology, which is you don't have to change everything to transform your health, to change, to really change everything in your health and wellness. And small hinges swing a big door of positive change. So many people in the medical industry will tell you to like knock down the door, change the whole door, like make these big hinge changes that are not sustainable because typically you're not ready to make such a big change, massive change in your life. Um, sometimes those changes can be very costly and they can have other repercussions down the line. So it's really about finding some small, easy, and ideally fun things that we can do in our everyday diet and lifestyle to help support our bodies. So I have a question for you guys, and I don't know how many of you have a perspective on this, but we're going to talk about water today and hydration because a lot of people think that they, um, you know, might have dry skin or aging skin or wrinkly skin because they're not drinking enough water. Because that's that's actually something that a lot of experts have been saying online and in doctors' offices for decades. 
but how much water do you really need to drink per day in order to have glowing skin? And like, for how long do you need to, to drink that amount of water? So, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, that's fantastic that you're going to bring that up because, you know, you hear so many crazy things. Like sometimes you hear like you drink a gallon, uh, you know, a gallon sounds reasonable, but it's like drink however much times your weight. And like, I'm like, okay, so which, like, how much is it? First of all, I wanted to say thank you, Walter, absolutely for the introduction. And I know that you have you're going to be listening in on the live and you've got yes. other stuff to do, but um, I'm going to go ahead and pop you out if that's all right. Thank you so much oh, again. Question pop in the comments. I'll be in the comments guys. All right. Thanks. Well, thanks so much. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Um, yeah. So I love that you're going to get clear on that because like I keep, I've seen it all over the place. I'm like, okay, is it like an ounce per weight? That still seems kind of like a lot, but mm -hmm. maybe it's what you need. I don't know. So I love that you're going to get into this. So go, go for it. <laughs> yeah. So the, the typical rule of thumb on how many ounces of water you need to drink per day is half your body weight in ounces of water. So if you weigh 200 pounds, a hundred ounces of water per day, which is a lot. So this is about a you know 20 ounce bottle of water. You have to drink five of these uh, in the course of a day, but it's not just about the water, you know, the amount of water. It's about how long, because a lot of people will say, all right, well, I drank some water and now instantly I expect all of my wrinkles to go away. I expect that my skin is just going to magically be like plump and glowy and that's just not the case. So how long do you need to drink water for? And then also like, what's the quality of water? And uh, obviously you see here that I'm drinking out of a glass bottle. One thing that water really helps us do is to protect us and to flush out pollutants and toxins, germs, and other, you know, other things that might be attacking our skin. So our skin is our largest organ. And it's also what we present to the world. And that world can be filled with toxins. <laughs> and so when you're drinking water, you're not just helping to hydrate the cells, but you're also helping to flush out toxins, which is really important. Um, whatever you're putting on your skin and whatever you're putting in your body has a cellular impact. And so by hydrating and by flushing out any of the toxic things that we might be putting on or in our bodies, we're helping to regulate the, the cells and to prevent obviously dehydration, which can cause aging, but also pr protect us from illness. And a lot of um, researchers have actually shown recently that you can have more vibrant skin by drinking more water. But again, it's not like, you just drink it and then magically your skin gets like dewy and glowy and, and, and very like elastic that way. Right. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be yeah. nice if we could have like some magic water drink? <laughs> um, and, and to be honest, I mean, I'm, I'm a busy single mom with three little girls and I don't have a whole lot of time. Like I, there's days where I forget to go to the bathroom. I'm sure lots of you can relate to that. Um, so I don't have I don't have a lot of time to like go and refill my water bottle and and drink water all day. So there's got to be other tips and tricks, and we'll we'll get into that in a second. But I want to tell you I want to ask you guys again first, um, and maybe Denise, you've you've heard from some of the people in the community. What is the biggest hurdle in terms of skin issue? Is it aging? Is it acne? Is it rosacea? Um, what are people really looking to, to have help with? Yeah. So I know that a lot of our, our um, community works with just wanting brighter skin, tighter skin, you know, more plump and hydrated skin. Um, that's what microscope helps with a lot. So um, I think definitely touch and like, you know, I know that as you age, you get the little fine lines. So just right, right there, right here, right here. So I think, I mean, I know water helps with the plumpness and, you know, keeping some of that hydration in. So I think talking to that would be like 
insanely helpful because that's that's a lot of the pain points that we, that we help deal with. Absolutely. And, you know, it is, it's hydration, it's flushing out toxins, um, and it's really healing your gut. Because I mentioned that right at the outset. And a lot of people, they usually look at me like, your gut affects your skin. And, and it does. So there's a, there's a lot of issues that originate in your gut. And your skin is basically, if you think of it, like the projector screen of what's going on in your body. And if you believe in the saying, you, we are what we eat, <laughs> then everything you put in your mouth can show up on the screen of yeah. your physical body, which is your skin, right? Yeah. So um, so if you think about like, if you eat anything fried, that greasy oil is just going to show up on your skin, right? <laughs> that pizza I had yesterday. <laughs> um, and so if we are, are truly what we eat, then we need to start being more mindful about what we're putting in our body. And the reason that I love telling my clients and educating them on, on hydration and drinking water is because that's a really easy, small hinge change to make. It's, it's not necessarily, um, it's a simple change to make. You don't have to like redo your entire diet, but just adding more water into your daily intake will have a significant impact on your gut health, which will then show up in your skin. Um, so that's the that's the first the first thing that people are like, you're in your gut. What what are you talking about? I don't understand. Um, <clears throat> but our the other thing that people usually ask me is like the quality of water. Um, so I'm drinking out of a, a, a glass. I was going to say just real quick, funny story. Uh, I found on um, social media the other day, there is such thing as a water sommelier. So like a wine yeah. taster. Really? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm serious. He has like a huge following and like a giant account and he goes around tasting different waters and just kind of telling you, you know, like, so purified water. He's like, this is basically tap water. And like, um, I don't know, like, you know, from this mountain springs, he's like, yes, this is the kind of water you want to, whatever. So he goes around telling you like the pHs and all that. He tests the water. I thought it was so interesting. I was like, okay, a water sommelier, this is a thing now. Okay. That's crazy. So I, I mean, you can be famous on Instagram or social media for basically doing about anything, but I really love that because there's so many gimmicks. I mean, I worked in advertising and marketing for over 20 years, so I know, you know, too, positioning is everything, right? And you want to position yourself. So if you're a water brand, you're going to position yourself against other water brands and you're going to feature whatever it is. And you mentioned pH. Does anybody actually really know what that means? pH balance? Well, Alpha. I'm a science nerd, so I know a little bit, yeah. but. <laughs> you, you do. <laughs> no, I mean, it sounds good. You need to drink like pH seven or like pH seven is like the neutral or something like that. So they make it sound nice. Exactly. And then there's the brands that go like way above and beyond to kind of try to overcompensate for all of the acidic foods that we're ingesting in our diet. Oh. Um, and so they'll say like, oh, this is pH 10 water oh. so that it's alkaline. Right. So that you can not worry about transforming your acidic diet, which is like gluten, dairy, oils, seed oils are the silent killer. I mean, literally they're so toxic. So any fried food, um, not all seed oils, but certain seed oils, mostly corn oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, any really super refined oils, they take seven years to digest. <laughs> Rapeseed oh oil. <laughs> and it's in everything now. It's even in plant-based milks. So if you look at a carton of almond milk, you'll see rapeseed oil in there. Oh, shoot. Well, <laughs> Like, yeah, I need to go look at all the ingredients in all my food. Thanks. <laughs> and the same goes for water. And so it's great that there is there are more experts who are coming out of the woodwork who can help us discern what's good water and what's just a marketing gimmick, because you don't need to pay $50 a day to just drink better water. <laughs> well. 
<laughs> I mean, not a lot of people can, even if that's what we had to do, right? I mean, exactly. it didn't have to be that way. Real quick, there are a couple questions in here uh, on, on the water. Um, palm oil, virgin oil, how are those? So virgin, extra virgin olive oil, the EVOO, um, has been used in the Mediterranean diet. And actually people from the, the five blue zones typically have uh, olive oil as a part of their, their diet endemically. So olive oil is great, especially if you can get organic and you know where it's coming from. There was that whole scandal a few years ago where I think some olive oil manufacturers were actually like putting palm oil and corn oil, in, like fillers. So in. palm oil is also a no-no? Palm oil is also a no-no. Um, like sunflower seed oil, pumpkin seed oil, okay. Um, but also when you're frying oil, then you're you're getting all of the toxins basically infused into the food, <laughs> right? Because you're heating up you're heating up something that is not meant to be heated. So like right. olive oil on a salad dressing, awesome. Um, avocado oil for cooking because it's higher heat so it doesn't burn and it doesn't release those toxins in your food. Okay. Um, but again, like with water quality, I see someone asked about alkaline and um, uh, acidity and al alkaline, but really it's about your diet and water can help with flushing out any toxins. Okay. So you're also so your stress levels, <laughs> your stress levels can release cortisol into your body and water has actually, you're increasing your water intake has a dual effect. So it not just, it doesn't just help with gut health, right? And flushing out those toxins, but it helps to stimulate the regeneration and the growth of your good gut microbiome. Cause I don't know if you guys know, but your, your gut's only the thickness of a piece of hair. Oh, I did not know. Well, I, I think <laughs> I may potentially, yes, because the nutrients need to pass through and all that good stuff. Right. So, but you don't want food <laughs> floating out. So I always make the, I'm from New York. And so we have the Lincoln tunnel that goes from New York city to New Jersey. And when they were building the Lincoln Tunnel, there's all these pictures um, back in the day where they built the Lincoln Tunnel with this mesh metal, and then they packed it with cement and created a tunnel. Now, that's kind of like our gut. So our gut is like this mesh, like you're saying, it's, a, it, it's, um, it's permeable, it's semi-permeable. But the gut mucus layer that's kind of like the cement in the Lincoln Tunnel is what prevents like the cars from floating out into the into the Hudson River mm -hmm. and it prevents anything from getting into the Lincoln Tunnel so that you know you could potentially damage the people who are trying to get from point A to point B that's what we need for our food because if you're eating clean and eating healthy that's going to help with your serotonin receptors which make you happy right because there's 90% of your serotonin receptors are in your gut. So if you're flushing away toxins and you're helping to heal your gut, you're going to naturally become more happy. The endotoxins and the cortisol that are triggered by stress are going to be minimized and your skin won't wear your stress. <laughs> that is so counterintuitive because when you think of all these hormones, you know, endorphins and oxy or um, what was the other one that you just said? Um, serotonin cortisol. And yes, you yeah. think of it in your brain, right? I mean, I, I think you think oxytocin, I think all that in your brain, you know, you just saying that, that it's 90% in your gut. That's where it starts then. I mean, that's, that's, that's huge. <laughs> like, yeah. We wear stress on our face, just like we, we, we wear, um, what we eat on our body, you know, our skin is our largest organ. And it's very impact. It's very affected by cortisol levels. It's very affected by outside toxins, inside to toxins. And so, yes, water is important. The quality of water is important. I have an under my sink filter and then I double filter it in a, on top of my counter filter. And then I put it in a glass bottle. Now that just helps to take out 
the things that are naturally found in New York City water, New York State water. Um, and then they add a bunch of like fluoride and stuff, which it's a toxin, right? So a lot of people don't realize that heavy metals can actually gunk up your system and can strip away that good gut, gut microbiome um, in addition to like the fried foods and all the other stuff. And so water helps to flush it away. Um, and I don't know if anybody asked this question, but I know you and I talked about this. It's not just the quality of the water and the quantity of water, but it's also the timing yes. of, of drinking water. So a lot of people will go out, what do we do? We go out to dinner, we make ourselves a meal at home and we have our plate and we've got our fork, knife, spoon, napkin, and then we put a nice big glass of water, right? Because our nutritionist or dietitian, Lindsay, told you to drink more water. And so when do you want to drink water? When you're thirsty, when you're, when you're eating something that's making you thirsty. Right. But actually, it's better to not drink water while you're eating. Okay. It's better to drink water before you eat a meal, up to 15 minutes before, to allow the natural acid in your stomach to do its job in breaking down the food. Okay. If you're just flushing the food through, your stomach acid doesn't get a chance to build up. And a lot of people, because they're drinking too much water while they're eating and they're eating, you know, acidic food, that's what gives you acid reflux. It's actually not, you know, and then they get acid reflux and they just start drinking more and more water. You need that good digestive enzymes and um, acid in your digestive system. So what I would always recommend is when you wake up first thing in the morning, chug some water, drink 10 to 20 ounces of water, put some lemon in it if you want to make it ice water, um, whatever floats your boat in terms of drinking water, just do it first thing in the morning. That's a good way to just kickstart your hydration, digestion, digestion. And then after breakfast, Okay. I was going to say, what about before? Oh, I guess you're going through the whole day. I was going to say, before bed, I've I've heard that it's a good. Yes, it is. Unless you're, you know. I mean, yes, I know you may have to get up and go to the bathroom, but. <laughs> you're one of my children and mommy wants to sleep. Um, so someone just asked also um, reverse osmosis for water filters. So that's what I have underneath my sink. And then I just have a Brita filter on top of my, it's a, it's a glass. I don't know if it's Brita brand, but it's a glass water filter. Okay. So, okay. um, another question about coconut oil. How's coconut oil? Cause it had its moment and it's in the spotlight. It did. <laughs> People were putting it in their hair and their skin. They were using it as a right. whitener. Um, coconut oil is great. I mean, I, I honestly, I love coconut oil. I, I do actually do coconut oil pulling in the shower. So mm -hmm. it helps to brighten my teeth naturally. So I don't have to use any harmful chemicals or scrubs or lasers to have nice white teeth. <laughs> um, but again, like it's, it's got a low heat uh, barrier. So if you're going to cook with something, maybe stick to olive oil or, or avocado oil. Okay. Um, or like a little veggie stock or something. So you're, you're not using, you're not burning oils. Yeah. Um, but yeah, coconut oil, as long as it's not refined and it's organic and it's from a good source and you read on the, on the bottle or the can or the jar that it doesn't have a bunch of other stuff added into it. Like just become a, become an investigator into right. your, into your pantry, into your kitchen, that. into your, into your health. Ask a lot of questions. Um, so yes, going back to the day, right? So we're gonna start. We're starting in the morning. We'll get to your before bed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so starting in the morning, I think I I wake up and I chug water, and it for for some reason it just it like helps me wake up. Also, um, I don't drink coffee, which I know a lot of people just you know what. I don't either. I'm in the same camp with you. Let's Yay. go. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I, I love the smell of it. Like to wake you up in the morning. It's fantastic. But like, I just can't with the taste, like you have to pour like a crap ton of sugar. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> a lot of sugar and a lot of milk. And then I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose. So yes. I mean, um, there, 
there are great organic coffee brands that are out there that um, don't have any like broken pieces, but a big thing with coffee is that there's a lot of mold, a lot of mold in coffee. Mold is a toxin. Mold strips our gut microbiome. It, it strips that mucus layer and it makes it really hard for us to heal our, our cells and to also be happy. It also caffeine, when you have caffeine first thing in the morning, you kind of are setting your day up. Like if you think about your baseline in the morning, you're setting up your day to crash at some point later in the day. So a lot of my clients, when they first get off coffee um, and they replace it with water, and you could even put certain things like in your water, you could make iced tea or you could make regular tea, um, swap out the sugar for monk fruit, you know, put some honey in your tea. Um, more natural sugar is better, obviously, um, than like the saccharin or or real refined sugar. But drinking water first thing in the morning will flush your anything out that didn't get processed while you were sleeping. Um, and then it'll set you up for like a good baseline for the day. Okay. Because then it's making so many day. people sad, letting them know that coffee <laughs> is not is not ideal. It's not, it's not what makes you happy in the morning. <laughs> tea, tea is good um, if you need a, a caffeine boost. But um, if you are going to drink coffee, look at like Purity Coffee um, is a good brand. It, because it coffee does have really like it's very high in polyphenols. Um, it's very high in antioxidants. So it's not terrible for you. It's just all the stuff like you were saying, all the crap that you put into it that makes it not so good for you. Um, and then it also has just a negative uh, impact on your your hydration. So coffee dehydrates you. Yeah. Typically stimulates the digestive system. And then the digestive system is like, oh my God, now I'm dehydrated and it just kind of shuts down. So a lot of my weight loss clients, um, they, they cut out coffee and they lose 10 pounds. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, it's not like that easy. Right, right. But, but it, it's other than what they're doing. Yeah. It's a, it's a big thing. So then after you eat breakfast, I really recommend eating breakfast to everybody. Every, every wellness coach that you'll ever meet will say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. But why? Um, even if you're doing compressed eating or some sort of intermittent fasting. Yes. Um, yeah. Breakfast is still a really important meal. Like I'd rather you drop out dinner, then drop out breakfast. Okay. And the reason is you're breaking fast. You're waking up your body. You're waking up your gut. You're waking up your digestive system. Water helps with that. So you're not just flushing out toxins. You're not just hydrating yourself in the morning, but then you're eating 15 minutes after you eat, drink another bottle of water. And then by lunchtime, you're going to feel like you have so much energy. It's going to be crazy. Yep. It's awesome. So then after, you know, leading up to lunch, you know, have another bottle of water, um, eight ounces, 10 ounces, whatever it is. And now by the time you're done with lunch, you've already had 30 ounces of water, right? So you could be halfway to your goal for the day. Okay. Yep. So then it's pretty easy. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, you drink your two glasses in the morning, drink a glass before lunch. I mean, it's, I think people overcomplicate it. Like you have those giant jugs that have like the numbers on it. It's like, just, just drink a cup. And it's like, not a lot. Right. I mean, like it's a cup of water. It's not right. a huge amount. Yeah. That makes so much sense. Exactly. And, and honestly, I prefer like colder water. And I know that a lot of wellness coaches say drink room temperature water. Cause then it doesn't constrict your digestive system. But I mean, whatever you, whatever makes it more palatable for you to drink, do that. Right. <laughs> Just do that. You know, you could put a little lemon in it, you could put a little orange in it. You could put a little sweetener in it. You know, um, I like fizz sticks from Arbonne because they give me branch aminos and also like B12. So I kind of carry these around wherever I go. It gives me a little bit, little boost of energy, but it makes it taste better. You can get tired of drinking water, honestly. Um, <laughs> I don't, I'm a huge water drinker, so I, I, but I do get it. Like my mom, for example, like she just doesn't drink water. I'm like, how do you survive? Like, I don't think I've, <laughs> I've seen her drink water like ever. 
Like, you don't have to like, here, please drink a cup. But yes, I understand. Like, you know, some people, yeah, you get tired, you need to mix it up, you need to add some flavor. So that's that's good. To, what about like these? Um, this is a little bit off topic, but like the like the little like crystal light type packets or whatever. What do you, I know what you're gonna say. I already see it in your face. It's not gonna be good. <laughs> well, just read the ingredients. I mean, anything that you can't pronounce typically shouldn't go in your body. Okay. Um, and if you Google the ingredients from a crystal light or from any sort of like water flavor, um, just make sure that it's not something that is going to harm your gut versus help your gut. Okay. So there's a, there's a monk fruit sweetener. It's like little drops. Um, and it has xanthan gum, which I think is fine. Um, and it has obviously monk fruit. Just, just be an investigator into your, into your pantry. Read your labels because that's how you're going to win. And then thinking about dinner and also going back to the topic of compressed eating. So typically people, what do we do? What do we eat for dinner? We have a big plate of meat, potatoes, maybe a little teeny salad or, you know, a salad covered in cheese or whatever it is. And our bodies, if we're eating that type of food and then going to bed right after, and we're not drinking water in between, like a lot of water in between, our bodies shut down as we sleep, right? And so we're not able to process that food. So it's, it's okay to eat that way. Um, I would prefer that you have more veggies and less right. meat <laughs> because it can take a healthy gut up to five hours to digest a couple of ounces of beef. Wow. And an unhealthy gut could be 10 X that. So you're thinking wow. about 50 hours to get that steak out of you. Wow. That's multiple days. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a really long time. Mm -hmm. Well, and I mean, it's it's interesting that you say that because I do remember reading an article like in in Europe, in many European countries, their biggest meal is at the in the middle of the day for mm -hmm. this very reason, and then they have a lighter dinner. Yep, it's usually like appetizers or something like that. Yeah, like tapas um, or salad right, exactly. or soup or something. Yeah, and it's it's interesting. I I just I just made that connection when you said that that that's probably a huge reason why. Yeah. And also because they're sipping on wine. <laughs> they're, oh, not, well, yes. <laughs> they're, they're not chugging water. So they're happy. <laughs> right. They're, they're feeling good. Um, they typically take a siesta after mm -hmm. they have their lunch. But, but honestly, after you have 15 minutes after dinner, drink as much water as you can tolerate without getting up every 20 seconds to go to the bathroom <laughs> while you're sleeping. Um, turn off your phone uh, because sometimes the like the toxic emotional stuff that you've got going on will just counteract your body will like be shutting down. Um, and then by the time you break fast in the morning, your body will have the chance to rest, to digest. And then it'll be really thankful in the morning. It'll be like, thanks, Denise. Thanks for feeding me. I'm not going into starvation mode. I'm not going into the desert of dehydration. Um, and so that's kind of how I would recommend drinking water throughout the day. Um, if you can use filtered, there's all these new ads for like filtered water in your shower. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen your skin. yeah. Um, I mean, listen, anything you put on your skin, whether it's your face, your arm, your leg, it's absorbed into your bloodstream within 30 seconds. That quickly, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So wow. as you're singing in the shower for 10 minutes, you know, think about, think about your skin um, and maybe get a filter for your, for your shower. I don't know how much they cost, um, but. They're not too expensive. I've seen them like ranging from 40, you know, the, the lower end ones are for around $45. So you can get, you can start at 45 and see where it takes you. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So a, a question then. Um, so from ingesting food, you know, and, and water, even the type of water, like how long would you say or have you seen, you know, maybe making these changes can affect the look, the way your skin looks like how, how long does it take to see the changes if you do make these adjustments? 
So I was having just recently, I was having like massive skin issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was so, I was so stressed. And I, I went to Florida a few weeks ago. And um, as you know, in Florida, it's been extremely hot. Mm -hmm. I'm oh. just sweating and I'm, I'm trying to wear like really clean SPF on my face because I don't want to, you know, I'm, I'm 41. I don't do like fillers or Botox or any of that kind of stuff. So this is my natural and I'm not really wearing any, anything right now, but my skin has completely transformed in probably the last two weeks. Okay. That's From acne, redness, dryness, even wrinkles. Like I always have, you know, I'm 41. I've got three kids. I've got wrinkles. <laughs> Um, and so using the My Derma Dream products, um, as well as like just having a really good uh, eating and drinking routine, I cut out alcohol, dairy, coffee. <laughs> I know dairy, dairy is the hardest for me, honestly. <laughs> I love dairy. But anything that ends in an O's converts into sugar as soon as you eat it. So lactose, glucose, which is why everybody says gluten-free and dairy-free first, because they just convert to sugar in your body. Um, and sugar, as we all know, is, is the delicious. <laughs> Especially cheese sugar. Yes. Um, but it, listen, it worked. And I really, I, I've been very diligent about my water intake. So I can't show you my, my kitchen because I'd have to take my whole computer with me, but <laughs> I have a bunch of little post-its that I put in my kitchen, in my car, on my, on my desk, in the bathroom that just say water, water, what, or smile. Like a little reminder. Or you know, I actually downloaded, so there's an app, a water reminder app. Mm. And it'll ping you however often you said it. So I had that going for a while. Now it's just kind of second nature, but yeah. What's it called? I forgot what it's called. I'll have to find it. I think it's like daily water, but W-A-T-R, not water. Okay. W -A uh -huh. um, <laughs> yeah. And it just like gives you like a little reminder to drink water every, however often you said it. That's very <laughs> cool. There's another app called Ulti Self. What's it? U U L T I self. Okay. And that one I use, it, it does have a water reminder, but it also has like, take your supplements. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Like check off exercise. So I, tr I try to do yoga for at least 15 minutes, like meditate, get into the sunshine, like all of the things that we need to do. It's just like nice to have an app reminding us. Yeah. Yeah, especially like you mentioned, being so busy because mm. <laughs> I'm I'm also a mom of two little ones. Yeah, and it it you you just get busy. I mean, work and taking care of them and life. So yeah. absolutely. Well, for optimal health, you really only need two ingredients: it's energy and fuel. And energy comes in the form of, you know, your your meditative practice but also how much energy you're, you're keeping for yourself. And as moms, it's hard. It's hard. It is hard to reserve our energy and not be everybody else's energizer bunny. Right. Um, energy also can be in the form of like the bio energy from the, my derma dream cool, the sculpting. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that's, that's, that is energy. Um, and then with fuel, it's just, making sure you're putting into your body what your body can use as fuel and doesn't just stick around and weigh you down and then gunk up your gut, which then gunks up your skin and gunks up your mood. Um, so keeping it clean. And I always love to end on the 80, 20 rule. It's always, it's always easier to just try to practice this 80% of the time and okay. when you like, I, I went out for ice cream with my kids over the weekend and I enjoyed the heck out of my <laughs> double. Every bite. <laughs> I didn't feel so great afterwards, but I enjoyed it while I was eating it. I really, I really did. So just try to enjoy life, you know, take these small tips and put them into practice and forgive yourself if you don't do it every day. 
Right. I think that, yeah, that's absolutely huge because especially when you start, it is, it's a, you know, a life change, especially if you're not a huge water drinker or if you're not like, you know, a huge salad eater or vegetable eater or whatever the case may be. It's huge to think, go into with it with this mentality, like, okay, I need to drink all the water. And it's like, just start by drinking an extra glass or start by, you know, drinking the cup in the morning. Like you say, like, just make those small changes. I love that the name of your your, your business is small hinges because it is just making, taking these tiny steps forward. And, you know, you mentioned it in two weeks, you see, mm-hmm. you already can see the transformation and that's huge without even, you know, without going crazy, I'm sure you'll definitely start seeing, um, you know, especially with hydration, um, the, the, the rosiness, the flush, the, <laughs> the less fine lines, because if your skin is, is hydrated, you know, the lines don't, can't settle in there because it's nice and juicy, right? Like plump yeah, and I noticed juicy. them here and here within yeah. two weeks, I stopped looking like my grandma. <laughs> I know and that's insane. I love to smile, but I don't want to, I don't want to get these lines here. These are fine. You know, what? <laughs> I, it makes me expressive and exactly. I, <laughs> camera work and I you know I have to look mad at my children when I'm reprimanding them I can't look like you know don't do that (laughs) take a couple weeks and just try it because it can't hurt you know it's like the Shakira song try everything birds don't just fly they fall down and get up oh my gosh my daughter loves that song (laughs) it's okay you gotta watch it Zootopia if you haven't seen it you guys that's where it is um but yes um and so, so I guess go to my website too. So there's lots of recipes on there. There's articles, there's helpful tips and tricks. I have a ton of funny videos on my Instagram at small hinges. Um, but go to smallhinges.health If you need anything, you can always email me to info at small hinges.health. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may not have thought of or, um, you know, if you didn't get a chance to stick around for this whole time, definitely either email us, put them in the in the chat on the video, and we'll definitely get back to you and and help you help you through this small hinge change. Yeah, I was adding in your information there because definitely. Um, what's the company? Because I put in small hinges. What's the website? What's the website? Smallhinges.health. Okay, I put in smallhinges.com and something else. I'm like, that's not Lindsay. <laughs> so- Nope. I get in touch with that guy. If anybody knows him, <laughs> let's yeah. just sell me his domain. Yeah, absolutely. So I, you know, I, you know, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be doing this every two weeks with Lindsay. So those of you that joined us today, and if you have any questions for Lindsay, I typed in her info in the comments and you can absolutely reach out. But if you, you know, if you don't want to, or if you want to ask live, we will see her again on May 10th. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. May right before 10. Mother's Day. Oh, right yay. Mother's Day. Yeah. So I, I think it's, you know, there's a lot of lot of dads on here, too, or a lot of guys on here, too. I think it's important to to note that this is not just, you know, we, we have children, me and you. So, but it's not just a, a female thing. It's, oh, no. for, it's for everybody. And young, older, you know, it doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. Drinking more water will always help. Yes, absolutely. Um I was going to say, it's so funny. I heard like there was this, you know, how kids, you know, do these crazy challenges sometimes on. So there was one that like you drink, I don't know how much water in a certain amount of time. This is just out of my own curiosity. Is drinking too much water at once a bad thing? (laughs) So I I think yes, because, um, (laughs) because it's, well, again, it goes back to the timing. So you're not drinking while you're eating. Right not drinking water while you're eating. But then if you're, if you're chugging too much water, it's just going to like impact your stomach acid levels. Um, and it could, I mean, make you sick to your stomach. (laughs) Um, too much of a good thing is always too much. So moderation, stick to the rule of half your body weight in ounces. So if you weigh 160 pounds, you need 80 ounces of clean water, between meals each day. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, Well, Lindsay, thank you again. I do want to let everybody know that we will also be having another skin. Oh, 
Did Lindsay freeze? Okay, I thought you froze for a moment. We'll have a, we're, next week, we'll be having another skincare expert, Dr. Ross Carter, and he will be talking about stem cells. So Lindsay, you should join in that one. That one's going to be very interesting as well. We're going to be trying to do these every week for you guys to come on live. Um, and the recordings will be available after inside our Facebook group. So if you haven't joined, I'm going to put or I'm going to put the link in there. Yeah. Um, I love, I love Dr. Carter, he he actually I, I, I'm friends with him and he's wow. he's such an amazingly intelligent person who can take really complex scientific information and distill it down to bite sized, easy to follow things to do in practical life. So he and I vibe that way because he he's just so good at explaining things that are would should be way over <laughs> my head. Right. Well, then we may have to coordinate like a live with both of you. That would be awesome. <laughs> fun. So fun. Okay, so well. Well, thank you so much for being here then and next week same time 12 p.m. Um, we will be doing the live with Dr. Carter. I'm going to create the event for it right now. You can sign up for it. And thank you so much, Lindsay, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. This has been so fun. Absolutely. Have a great day, everyone. Any questions, comments, concerns, drop them in our Facebook group. And I will be in there for the next few minutes chatting with anybody that wants to leave any questions. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. You too. Bye.